Election night in America and the polls have closed in Oklahoma. Good evening once again from the Oklahoman's Video Studio. I'm Dave Morris providing you some election night coverage from our downtown studios here in Oklahoma City. Thanks so much for joining us. The polls opened at 7 a.m. They closed at 7 p.m. And in between, Oklahomans across the state cast their ballots for the president, for congressional races, for seven state questions. And a lot of questions uh, from how they voted today will be answered throughout tonight as the results come in. We will have live updates here on NewsOK.com. And if you happen to be downtown in Oklahoma City, on our big screen at Sheridan and Robinson as well. Follow along live on our website at NewsOK.com or watch on demand. Let me introduce you to the cast of characters we have in studio currently. And that will be shuffling throughout the night. We'll get to Brian Dean on the phone in just a second from the State Election Board and Chris Castile via Skype from Washington, D.C. But first, to my right here, from the Oklahoman, we have Ben Felder and Rick Green. Gentlemen, thanks so much for your time tonight. Looking forward to your perspective and analysis. Yeah, good evening. And from Sooner Poll, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Schaffer joining us once again to help us out to dissect the polls and the numbers. Sir, great to see you again. Thanks. Good looking bow tie. It's purple for a reason. <laughs> He's a smart man. He's Bill Schaffer with Sooner Poll. We'll bring these gentlemen back in in just a second. As I mentioned, Brian Dean is on the phone. He's with the State Election Board. Sir, how are you? but we're gonna make it you guys ramped up uh, you guys have done a really good job on your Twitter account keeping Oklahomans informed not just the media but Oklahomans informed on how to vote where to vote and then kind of what's going on behind the scenes but let me back up and just say Brian how did it go today you know uh, surprisingly smooth given how many folks went out and cast ballots today um, we, we had record numbers participate for early voting and voting by mail so you know, we were really expecting a, a pretty healthy turnout today, and I, I do think we got that. But, um, uh, you know, we have had some long lines in places, and we've tried to shift some resources around to deal with that as we can. But um, overall, you know, I, this is nothing more than we generally get from a, a pretty busy election. So um, I've been pretty pleased it, it's gone fairly smoothly. Any reports of problems with machines or ballots anywhere across the board? Uh, we've had some technical issues. That happens in every election. We have over a, a, a thousand polling places, almost two thousand polling places. So, um, if you know you get two thousand of any type of machine up and running uh, for an entire day, you're going to have some of them go down. And so we uh, we try to get those fixed as quickly as possible. And if it's not something we can get a quick fix on, we'll run a replacement machine out there. And we have procedures in place for for ballots to be placed in an emergency bin, and then they get scanned through. So. Uh, but, but again, that's nothing unusual, and we haven't had any sort of widespread issues or problems. Chatting on the phone with Brian Dean from the Oklahoma Election Board. Brian, uh, as I mentioned, the polls closed. They closed at 7 p.m. Do you have any way of knowing? Are there people still in line anywhere? Uh, we do believe there, there are still people in line. Anybody who is in line at 7 p.m. will get to vote. So um, we know there have been lines in, uh, uh, at a lot of precincts, and so anybody who made that line by 7 p.m., they're going to keep the polls open until those folks make it through. So we, we probably do have, still have some folks in line in places. And, um, you know, we, that might delay how quickly we get some results in from those precincts. But uh, we want to make sure everybody who, uh, you know, can possibly get their, their ballot uh, counted does so. So we're going, to, we're going to stay open until every one of those people gets through the line. And you touched on this on one of your earlier answers today. We saw very high early voter turnout. Was that surprising? And then from what you've seen and heard today, were you surprised at the today's turnout? Well, I, you know, it's not surprising to see you high turnout for a presidential race, but it's not just that we, we broke records with, with uh, the numbers this year. We really shattered them. Our, our previous record for the most uh, early votes we ever had was 114,000 early voters in 2008. We had, we had 153,000 and change this year. And um, for mail voting, we've had over 103,000 ballots returned. Um, that number may go up slightly still as, as they've, uh, because any that arrived today, they, they will get counted in there. But um, the previous record on that was 74,000. So we we're 40,000 above, you know, 30,000 above on each of those categories. And I mean, those are huge margins uh, when you look at what we've had in previous elections. So it was pretty surprising to just have numbers that high. As far as turnout today goes, you know, everything's anecdotal, and we really won't know anything until we start getting results in and seeing. Um, every big election, you know, we, we feel like we see good turnout, but you just don't know what the numbers until you really start counting them. And you guys ramped up efforts behind the scene. I, I saw that you uh, employed roughly 1,000 extra workers today at the polls. We did. Every county that asked for additional poll workers, we, we paid for them. 
Um, in addition to that thousand we paid for, some of the counties hired some more with their own budgets as well. So um, we had a lot of extra poll workers out there. You know, and we, we really try to be flexible. And if, if we see, a, you know, a particular precinct that's having issues with long lines, we'll send people out to, to try to deal with that. I know we had one in Osage County earlier. We actually sent some uh, additional poll book and some more polling booths we, in a sheriff's car with lights and sirens going to get them out there quick. Um, so we, we've tried to do that as we can throughout the day. And I know people are frustrated with the lines, but uh, we, we really want to see these as a positive because – this is what good voter participation looks like. You know, in Oklahoma, we had, frankly, abysmal turnout in 2014 for the gubernatorial election. And so we were really encouraged to see more people getting their voice heard and going out and getting their ballots cast. And, and this is what that looks like, and that's going to include some lines. As you can see there, we're chatting with Brian Dean from the Oklahoma State Election Board. Brian, I have a question for you, and this may not be a question you can answer, but... Is there any way of knowing as the results come in and are crunched over the next few days, how many ballots may have been cast that were filled out down ballot, but people didn't vote for a presidential candidate? That's really going to be interesting to see. And, and we, do, we do have a way of monitoring that. We, we record those as what we call undervotes, where um, somebody casts a ballot but leaves it blank in a specific race. And typically, the presidential race is going to get more votes than any other race on the ballot. Um, but we'll, we'll have to see if, if uh, you know, some of the political circumstances this year, if we, if we don't see more undervotes um, this year than we have in the past. But uh, uh, I'm going to be kind of looking out for that myself because I am a bit curious. Brian, Rick Green, as I mentioned, he's on the desk here joining us here in the Oklahoma's video studio. Rick, I'll toss it to you. I believe you have a question for Brian. Yeah, Brian, can you hear me okay? I, I sure can. Great. Um, what what were the length of some of the lines here in the metro area? Uh, were some of the busier polling places uh, up to an hour or more, or, or less than that? I, I, we did have some. I think there were over an hour. Um, you know, once we started, if we you know if we saw any getting to two hours or, or more, we really tried to, to to you know shift some resources to those. And I, I know there were some people reporting lines of two or hours or more. Um, you know, and I, I don't know if that was just in particular portions of the day or or all day, but I, you know, I don't think most people had to wait that long. I think there were just, you know, some precincts here and there that were especially busy, but um, I think I think an hour was was not too uncommon across the state for sure. Were, were there any Were there any complaints of people saying, well, there's electioneering going on at at the uh, polling place, or any inappropriate uh, behavior, or anything like that that you heard about? Um, again, you know, we get a few of those every election, but nothing really out of the ordinary. I mean, sometimes, you know, the, the law does not allow any sort of electioneering, and that would include wearing campaign hats and shirts and buttons and things like that. And there are always people who don't realize that that's not allowed, and so they wear them in, and poll workers will generally ask them to remove those or, or turn them inside out if it's a T-shirt. And, and um, you know, I know we've had, had some of those cases today, but again, we, we see that in, typically in every election. And so... Uh, we just we try to get everybody through, and, and if we have problems like that, just deal with them as they crop up. Very good. Brian Dean, what's the rest of the night look like for you? Well, we're just going to have to make sure every precinct gets in and every vote gets counted. And, um, again, with, with uh, some of those folks still waiting in lines, you know, who got there by 7, you know, it may delay results. We're, we pride ourselves on typically getting pretty quick results and getting pretty ac you know, getting very accurate results on our website. And um, uh, oftentimes we have most of our precincts in by 9.30 or 10. That may be a little later tonight. We'll see how that goes. But if a lot of those, those precincts are delayed, then, then you know, it may, it may delay how quickly we can get those, those results up on our website. But um, I'm just really looking forward to start seeing those numbers pop up and, uh, and, and making sure we get all this stuff counted and, and, and done. He joins us every big election night. He's Brian Dean from the Oklahoma State Election Board. Sir, as always, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. We will. Brian mentioned the polls. We spoke with various uh, people, Oklahomans, who hit the polls today to, to see who they were voting for, what their thoughts were, what they were looking forward to, uh, both today at the polls and then beyond. Uh, and I believe we have that video package, guys, if you want to roll that. We need a change. We don't need the same old thing that we've been doing, and Hillary is a liar. Uh, sure, I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Yeah. The fact that she's a woman I think is very important, um, but I think she's also just very well qualified. Uh, voted for Trump. Uh, the deficit, I, I feel like he has uh, a better understanding of uh, the deficit and uh, some of my other concerns were uh, skyrocketing health costs, um, 
immigration, those are some of the most important things I felt that he could handle. It's huge. It's just huge. I didn't really spend my life waiting for this moment, but as a mother of two daughters who are 20 and 17, although 17 year old's very unhappy she's not voting today, um, this means the world to me. It means the world has changed. Obama care, I don't care for it. I think a lot of my families and relatives are suffering for that. High cost, high cost. Mm -hmm. So it's not getting anywhere. So yes, I'm ready for a change. I'm, I'm excited that our generation gets to see the first black president and potentially the first female president. I think it sends a really strong message to um, young girls over the country that you can do whatever you want. We are live from the Oklahoma's video studio tonight. As we mentioned, the polls in Oklahoma closed at 7 p.m. We're bringing Chris Castile via SkyPrice now. And Chris, we're starting to see some uh, states being declared. In fact, Hillary Clinton is uh, said to win Delaware, Washington, D.C., Maryland, Massachusetts, Illinois, New Jersey, and Rhode Island. This is uh, CNN's projection based on exit polls. Donald Trump will win West Virginia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. Chris, any surprises there? No, not at all. You know, we're still we're still waiting on the biggies. Uh, Florida, North Carolina, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So it could be an early night. And when I you know, first uh, came over here to to join this uh, conversation, uh, Clinton was up in Florida. Um, so if that one goes, it's it, it's hard to see Trump uh, pulling it out tonight. And Florida could be interesting because uh, I think I saw something yesterday where half of the registered voters voted early there. I know. It's just an amazing, uh, amazing uh, early vote in, in so many places. Uh, and, I, you know, I wanted to ask uh, Brian Dean, you know, what he had heard anecdotally about the Oklahomans showing up because, you know, that really in the last two presidential elections, uh, turnout in Oklahoma has been down, even though, you know, you had this historic election in 2008 with uh, Barack Obama, then Senator Barack Obama against McCain, John McCain. And it was, and fewer people voted in that than they did in '04 for Kerry and uh, and Bush. So you know, I was, I, I'm wondering. I mean, how many of these people just wanted to avoid the long lines of Tuesday, or who, you know, and how many were were um, were driven out by by uh, some race that they really wanted to vote for, whether it was presidential, state questions, whatever it might be. I mean, obviously. Presidential race is not competitive in Oklahoma. The only question, uh, the only thing we're kind of walk, watching right now is whether uh, uh, Clinton can win a county because no Democrat has won a county in uh, Oklahoma since Al Gore in 2000. No Democrat has carried the state since Lyndon Johnson in 64. Wasn't a lot of suspense. So, um, you know, just be interesting to see, what, you know, ultimately at the, end of the, at the end of the night, what total turnout is compared to 2012. Chris, how many presidential election nights have you covered now? Um, since 88. <laughs> since 88. So what did you spend today doing? Um, really just getting ready for tonight, you know, writing, writing, uh, writing up some of you know, what, I, what I was working on and, uh, and watching the, uh, uh, the, the news shows. There's really not much you can do on a Tuesday. You know? I mean, I was uh, watching um, our great reporters who are out in uh, Oklahoma City watching their tweets and watching their video interviews come in. Darla Slippy, Juliana Keeping, Silas Allen, Ben Felder. I mean, they you know did their usual great job of getting out there and getting uh, people were reluctant to talk to them. All, you know, apparently, you know, they I, I think it was Juliana said four out of five ran away from her. But um, and, and that's you know, right. And Darla, did. you retweeted some of their tweets. Darla Slipkey, as you mentioned, as you were dropping names there of our quality reporters. You mentioned uh, Darla's tweet talking about how one lady was too embarrassed to admit who she had voted for. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I, I think it's some in the package that, that you just showed, you know, we're, we're happy with their votes, you know, proud of their, uh, happy with their, their, with their choice, you know, proud of voting for, uh, for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. But um, I, I think clearly, you know, I think Juliana tweeted that she got a lot of, uh, you know, lesser of two evil responses. Chris, what would surprise you tonight? Um, I think it would surprise me if uh, Republicans, you know, had kept a firm grip on the Senate. You know, I think, I, I think either the Democrats are gonna are, are gonna, you know, take it over by one or two seats, or it's gonna wind up in a tie. It would it would surprise me if Republicans retain control of the U.S. Senate. Chris, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we have Ben Felder and Rick Green on set. I believe Rick has a question for you. 
Chris, would it surprise you if uh, there was a, uh, a county uh, in Oklahoma uh, that went for Hillary Clinton tonight? I think so. It would probably surprise me, Rick. You know, I think, you know, so much of Oklahoma is Donald Trump's demographic, you know, the um, high school, you know, white high school education. And even in areas like, you know, like Oklahoma County, you know, where we're much more educated, much more diverse. I think you have, like, say, in Edmond, you know, you have people who just cannot bring themselves to vote for Hillary Clinton. You know, Cleveland County is definitely a possibility, but you still have that more part of um, Cleveland County. I mean, I think Norman could go for Hillary. You know, it's hard. It, you know, it takes a lot of effort to kind of separate out the city, separate out the vote results in the cities from the counties themselves. Like, you know, like, there's a chance Oklahoma City could vote for for Hillary Clinton, but you know, it'll take some effort to parse that out. But so because of those those things, Rick, you know, that demographic, which I think also is is kind of prevalent more um that that it would be hard for her. that it was oklahoma county when i talked to democrats at the democratic national convention in uh, philly a few weeks ago they said their best shots were oklahoma county and cleveland county and, and you know it's important to say that uh the president didn't get 40 percent in either of them in 2012 so that's you know kind of a a, a tall order is is there a little bit of a change of foot we we see that texas because of demographics, uh, is trending a little bit more on the Democratic side, but it's still Republican. Uh, do you see Oklahoma eventually going in that direction as well? Um, not the state, not any time in the near future, but I think the, or, it, at least in central Oklahoma, you know, Tulsa is just so reliably red. You know, no matter no matter how much change there there has been in Oklahoma City, um, you really haven't seen it in Tulsa. So, but I do think central Oklahoma um, will will be will become a lot more of a battleground in 2018 and all those statewide races you guys are are going to cover there. It should be really interesting. You know, Fallon barely won. Mary Fallon, Governor Mary Fallon, barely won re-election in Oklahoma County in uh, 2014. Chatting via Skype with Chris Castile, joining us from Washington, D.C. His comment there, a little foreshadowing we'll get to in just a second. Chris, I'm going to bring in Bill Shafford from Sooner He has a question for you. And ladies and gentlemen, as you see the handsome gentleman over there, over his shoulder, we're starting to get uh, some early results there. But uh, Bill, you had a question for Chris. Yeah, Chris, the, or the early uh, absentee ballots and early voting are showing 67% for Donald Trump. Typically, as we just heard Brian Dean talk about, how the increase in early voting here compared to prior years, but yet Democrats usually are better at getting their vote out than Republicans. Uh, do you think this is uh, it's going to carry over as we begin to see the results come in for uh, voting today? Uh, do you think that he can maintain a 67% uh, advantage? I do. I, you know, I think um, it, the last um, Democrat to get more than 34% um, was Al Gore. So that means John Kerry and, and President Obama twice got 34% um, or less. So, you know, if you throw in Gary Johnson, I'll know, you know, we'll know later tonight what impact he, he'll have on it. But I mean, it's not it's not too far off the norm, right, for 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 uh, the Democrat to get only 33 percent. Chatting via Skype. The, the recent norm, the last three elections, presidential elections. Chris Castile via Skype from Washington, D.C. He mentioned Al Gore, the last uh, Democratic presidential nominee to uh, win a county in Oklahoma. That was among the numerous facts you provided in Sunday's editions of The Oklahoman, Chris. Thank you for that information. You're welcome. And in today's editions of The Oklahoman, our Ben Felder provided 16 storylines to follow tonight. And Ben, I'll bring you in at this point. What are some of the storylines you're following tonight? Well, one of them was a look at uh, do Dems have a chance with any counties in Oklahoma. And I think Chris is right. It's, it's, it's a kind of a long shot, but Oklahoma County and Cleveland County would be it. Um, it's definitely trending more Democratic uh, in Oklahoma County uh, when you look at, uh, you know, recent races. Um, I think the challenge for Democrats right now in, uh, is, you know, do you have other candidates on the ballot that are going to drive up that Democratic vote? Do you have a strong enough uh, congressional candidate for the 5th District, which includes Oklahoma County? Um, the one thing that makes me think that it might be a little interesting, I don't think it'll be enough to tip it over, but uh, you do have Democrats that um, have some pretty competitive um, urban seats right now in South Oklahoma City and Northwest Oklahoma City. Uh, some strong Democratic candidates that I think are really have done a really good uh, get out the vote campaign. So it's a chance that they may drive up those numbers a little bit more if some of those voters are going to go along and vote for 
or Clinton, uh, some of those seats they're going to have to rely on um, Democratic State House votes that are also voting for Trump. So it's, it's yet to be seen there, but I think we're trending that direction, but I still think it, it's kind of a long shot. I think turnout's an important question. Uh, as Brian was mentioning at the top of the, the program, uh, turnout's been pretty low as of late here in Oklahoma. Um, new records and, and early and absentee uh, ballots being submitted is a good sign, but are those traditional voters that are just moving more towards early voting, especially as the state has made that more of a priority, or does that show more people entering the electorate? Uh, for me, I'm also looking at state and house seats. Um, I think Republicans are really eyeing a handful of seats in Democratic control in the house that are in eastern Oklahoma. Um, seats that are open, so there's not an incumbent on the ballot, you do have Republican and Democratic uh, candidates, but in counties where Trump did very well in the primary, is expected to do very well tonight or today, um, so I think Republicans are looking to expand their, their rural resume, so to speak. Um, and on the flip side, Democrats are hoping to maybe pick up a few urban seats uh, that have been in Republican control for quite a while, uh, maybe banking on some changing demographics in Oklahoma City. Those are among the 16 storylines <laughs> Ben Velder outlined in uh, Tuesday's editions of The Oklahoman. Uh, and, and Rick, you've been uh, integral in this interview tonight asking some questions. What are some of the storylines you're following tonight? Well, I'm really interested in the state questions. It's interesting that the presidential race gets all the attention and drives people to the polls, but some of these questions like the penny sales tax affects people where they live when they go to the checkout line in the grocery store or you know, being able to buy a bottle of wine along with dinner at the grocery store. So uh, that's, I think, going to affect people more ultimately than, than some of the legislative races or, or other parts of the ticket. So uh, it'd be interesting to see how, how those go. There's been a lot of money spent on some of these state questions, and a lot of it was spent toward the end of, of the campaign season. So it, it, it's a lot of guesswork on, on how that's going to break out tonight. So I'll, I'll be looking at that. Bill, how much does that money change? Uh, an issue like a state question when the money comes in towards the uh, the end of the campaign season? Well, we know money is the mother's milk of politics, and so even for state questions, it can matter a lot, and that's where even endorsements matter a lot, because uh, people are heavily influenced by when they don't know the subject matter, when they're looking at a state question going, I really don't know how I feel about this. Money, uh, ad, ads on television, endorsements, all of those things will have a much more greater influence. They're watching the World Series last week, suddenly they see state question, whatever it is, continually pop up, something like that. Absolutely, I mean, they, they know that that's something that's gonna be on the ballot when they get there and they need to learn something about it. And uh, they will rely on what other people say. Uh, and, and that's the reason why these state questions, when we poll them, can, can change literally overnight. We've seen it happen in the past, and it wouldn't surprise me if we see a few of the state questions not go exactly the way we've seen in early polling. It's good stuff. You'll have good stuff all night long here from the Oklahoman's video studio. You can watch online live at newsok.com, the big screen out front. We'll be on all the social media platforms as well, or you can watch on demand at your leisure throughout the night. Big thanks to Rick, to Ben, to Bill. Uh, we had uh, Brian Dean and Chris Castile as well earlier. Big thanks to all these gentlemen. Later on tonight, I got to tell you, we have State Senator A.J. Griffin and State Representative Jason Dunnington. They will be joining our cast of thousands here in the studio, providing some perspective from their various sides of the fence. So be sure to stick with us throughout the night on newsok.com as well as updated uh, election results as they come in from the State Election Board.